Hello, the chapter that we are going to begin today is called Conic Sections. You have already studied a lot about straight lines in detail in coordinate geometry in the chapters before this. Now in this chapter and the chapter after this, we are going to study a few new shapes. These shapes are called circles, parabola, ellipse and hyperbola. Now you are already familiar about circles and you have studied their properties and different things about them in your junior classes. You must also have heard about parabola in physics when you studied that whenever we throw an object into the air, it will always follow a parabolic path. The word ellipse must also be familiar because you already know that our earth orbits around the sun in an elliptical path. Now hyperbola is a relatively new shape but you should know that whenever we study pressure versus volume diagrams in chemistry, some of these diagrams are actually hyperbolic in nature. In this chapter, we are going to study what is the common link between all of these different shapes. You will find that the common link is that we can get all of these different shapes when we cut a cone in different ways. In the animation that follows, you will observe how this uh, cone is giving us all of these shapes differently. Now, we are going to use a double cone to visualize conic sections. To do this, we are going to cut our double cone at different angles. For the first angle, we are going to take a very flat plane which is at an angle of 0 degrees. When we cut our cone using this, we get a circular shape as you can imagine very well that we are going to have a circle at every level, uh, at every layer in the cone. Now I have increased the angle of my plane a little. Now when I cut my cone at this angle, my circle ha sh circular shape does not remain anymore and it has stretched out a bit to create an ellipse. Now in the third situation, I am going to increase the angle of my plane further and I have reached at an angle such that this plane is now parallel to my cone. At this angle, when we cut the cone, the new shape that we are now getting is called a parabola. Now in the fourth situation, I have increased the angle even further. Now in this situation, when I cut my double cone, you can see that both my cones are now giving me a, uh, two independent shapes and both of these together are called a hyperbola. So what we saw here was, we can get four different shapes by the same double cone when we cut it at four different angles. And that is why all these four shapes are collectively called the conic sections. Now, we are going to observe a very interesting property of conic sections. According to this property, if light is thrown at a spherical object from different angles, we will get different conic sections as a shadow. Now, we are going to look at the same thing in an experiment. For this experiment, I am going to need a ball and a torch so that I can throw the light on the ball. Now, so that I can see the shadows clearly, I am going to dim the lights. Now, uh, for the first position, I am going to place the torch above the ball. Now, since the torch is placed exactly above the ball, the shadow that I am going to get is going to be circular in shape. So, the first conic section that I am getting is a circle. Now, I am going to tilt the torch a little and when I start tilting the torch, the shadow becomes a little elongated and now it has taken a new shape. This shape will be called an ellipse. Now I have tilted the torch further and I have reached a particular point such that the height of my ball is at the same level as my torch. Now at this point, the shape I am getting is like a U shape and this shape is called a parabola. Now when I further lower my torch, the shape of the parabola becomes sharper and the shape that I am now getting will be called a hyperbola. So you saw that when I uh, change the position of my torch, I was getting four different conic sections for different positions of the torch. You can also try this experiment at home. Till now, we have seen the shapes of the different conics that we have. But as we are studying coordinate geometry, we need to also know their equations. Now here, I have written a particular equation 
which collectively represents all the different conic sections that we have seen. This equation is actually called a general second degree equation. Now, why is it called a second degree equation? You can see that I have terms of x square, y square and xy over here, which are all second degree terms in x and y. Now you can see that there is no other possible combination of x and y that I can add to this term so that it remains second degree. That is why I will call this a general equation because we have considered all possible combinations so that it remains a second degree equation. You can see that I also have terms of x, y and a constant term over here which all have a degree less than 2. Now since we have terms that have degree less than 2, we will call this a non-homogeneous equation. Now if you recall, I have mentioned that this particular equation collectively represents all the conic sections. Now if I want to identify what sort of conic it is representing, I need to have some specific conditions so that I can make this identification. That is why I will say that there are specific conditions on the constants A, B, H, G, F and C and under these particular conditions, we can define that whether if this equation will represent a circle a parabola, an ellipse or a hyperbola. Now there is one very interesting thing that you can observe over here. If you recall that we have already studied straight lines and it's equal, the equation of straight lines was ax plus by plus c equal to 0. Now this equation is a one degree equation and if you, uh, if you can recall our straight lines are also a one dimensional shape. Now here all the shapes of conic sections that we have seen are two dimensional shapes and our equation over here is also a two degree equation.